sleepy? Well, wake up, for our subject today is stirring stuff, hibernation and torpor. The amazing lungfish, believe it or not, can survive like this for years. And finding out what's going on during the big sleep requires quite a bit of ingenuity. There are some creatures that cope with the cold wide awake, while others are dead to the world. And the hibernation story that concerns some toads, a road, and the milk float. Let's start in a European forest, in the depths of winter. While active, mammals maintain a constant body temperature, often about 30 degrees Celsius. And in winter, that requires a lot of energy. But by lowering their metabolism to the minimum possible level without dying, their energy needs plummet. And so small mammals, like this birch mouse, can survive ice and snow for months on end. Another true hibernator is the hedgehog. Its heartbeat falls from 190 beats a minute to 20, and its body temperature drops from 35 degrees to 10. An arctic squirrel can drop its temperature to minus three degrees. But larger animals can't do this. If they did, they wouldn't have the energy to raise it again, and they'd never wake up. So many black bears spend their winters in a state of dormancy, a kind of shallow hibernation. And some females even give birth at this time. Their metabolism is only slightly lowered, and on warmer days, they might wake up and move around. Badgers, on the other hand, don't hibernate at all. They respond to cold weather by going into torpor for the hours they'd normally be asleep. Their metabolism drops right down, like hibernation, but for a much shorter time. Unlike hibernation, no advanced preparation is necessary. Though badgers do block their tunnels with leaves and twigs to keep out the draft. Underneath this log is another less well-known hibernator, a bumblebee queen. And she's truly the first of her line, for once she awakes, she'll create a brand new bumblebee colony from scratch. It's spring, and the European countryside is full of flowers. The newly awakened queen visits them in turn, collecting nectar and pollen. Just as attractive to her is an old shed, for inside it, she'll probably find a suitable site for a nest. A gap in a bit of rubble will do. Once inside, special glands in her abdomen produce a wax with which she fashions a centimetre-high honeypot. Around the pot, she places bundles of pollen, moistened with nectar, called bee bread. Food for her and for her future progeny. And on some of the bee bread bundles, she lays up to eight fertilised eggs. Which, after three days, hatch out into larvae. Their food is right at their feet. And after a week of gorging themselves, the larvae spin a cocoon in which to pupate. Twelve days later, the new bumblebee generation emerges. Silvery for the first few days, these all-female workers now take over the running of the nest. While the queen stays at home, they go looking for food. 